Hello YouTube. Sometimes uh, my research comes together at a focal point coming from different directions. I think this is one of such cases. The Golden Horde was the group of settled Mongols who ruled over Russia, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Moldova and the Caucasus from 1240s until 1502. The Golden Horde was established by Batu Khan, uh, the grandson of Genghis Khan, and subsequently uh, it was a part of the Mongol Empire before its collapse. The Golden Horde's name Altan Ordu may have come from the yellow tents used by the rulers, but no one is sure. Legends say that the Tatar Mongolian had Batu during the invasion of Russia captured a lot of treasures that are hidden somewhere on the territory of that country, but so far no one has managed to get to them. One of these places may be the vicinity of the village of Zolotaryovka near Penza. The remains of an ancient settlement have been preserved there. According to the historian Gennady Belaripkin, in the 15th century there was a fortress here which was destroyed and burned by the army of Batu Khan. For an unknown reason, the corpses of killed soldiers, weapons and jewelry were left on the site of the burned fortress. The looters were afraid to touch the valuables, as they were afraid of a curse that allegedly struck everyone who attempted to kill them. So everything remained in place. Already in our time, archaeological excavations were carried out in the area of Zolotaryovka, but uh, no Khan's treasures were found. Another legend tells about the golden horses of Batu Khan. They were allegedly cast from gold collected from all over Russia as a tribute to the Khan. These horses with ruby eyes once guarded the gates in the bar located in the lower reaches of the Volga, uh, the capital of the Tatar state of the Golden Horde. They were serving as the symbol of its power. Then the Tatar Mongols moved their capital to the area of the current village of Tsaryov, Volgograd region. The Golden Horses also moved with them, but after the victory of the Russians over the army of Khan Mamai and the Kulikovo field, nothing more is heard about the legendary treasure. One of the horses was allegedly buried along with the body of Mamai so that he, that the horse guarded the owner. According to legends, the Khan was buried on one of the hills beyond the Volga river, but none, no one knows the exact location of the Mamai mound. The second horse was allegedly first taken with them by the Cossacks who attacked the Ord camp, but they rushed after the wagon train on which they were carrying the loot. A battle took place in which many people died. As for the golden horse statue, it has disappeared without a trace. Some historians suggest that the Cossacks threw it into one of the nearby reservoirs and it still lies at the bottom of some lake. However, there were many more rumors about this golden horse. For example, the Soviet writer Ivan Yefremov in the book The Andromeda Nebula assured uh, that one uh, that the statue rests on the bottom of the Indian Ocean. In my videos on the subject of Ivan Yefremov's mysterious life, I have presented information about this person. He, a genius in many ways, was suspected by the Soviet secret police, the KGB, to be an extraterrestrial. His knowledge was incredible, and he knew about hidden sites of natural resources. He knew where to find things, for example, diamond pipes, and much more. Well before they were found, the 40 volumes of the KGB investigation of him are still classified. I am sure Vladimir Putin, Russia's president, could shed light on this, but I am not holding my breath. Please see my playlist about Ivan Yefremov. I spent decades uh, basically following uh, clues left in his books and his research, like in Africa, wherever I could. It, it is fascinating, so I am not surprised that 
he knew about the location of the second golden horse and i'm sure the soviets and others would want to get their hands on it uh, during the soviet time and of course nowadays imagine so much gold therefore i understand the soviet expeditions to the indian oceans that i the ocean that i described in my recent video about the giant serpents sighted in that part of the world they might have been snooping for something else not of course uh, the serpents because that was before the sighting and um, possibly the uso base too but that's a different story let's hear what Yefremov said about the discovery of the horse and that of course discovery was to take place in the future of our planet so two protagonists are exploring the indian ocean she is what we can call a professional archaeologist and he's an assistant there she gasped there is the horse what what horse a huge statue of a horse down there in a natural niche i'm going back to take a proper look the dark cliffs formed a lofty lancet arch under which stood the gigantic statue of a horse neither seaweed nor barnacles marked the polished surface of the carving the unknown sculptor had endeavored mainly to depict strength therefore part of the body was exaggerated the tremendous chest given abnormal width and the neck sharply curved the near foreleg was raised so that the round and kneecap was thrust straight at the viewer while the massive hoof almost touched the breast the other three legs were strained in an effort to lift the animal from the ground giving the impression that the giant horse was hanging over the viewer to crush him with its fabulous strength the mane on the arch neck was depicted as a tooth ridge the jowl almost touched the breast and there was ominous malice in eyes that looked out from under the lowered brow in the stone's monstrous pressed back ears i wonder how old that statue can be miyuko asked herself thoughtfully dar vetter shrugged his shoulders and then suddenly remembered the as most astonishing thing about the horse why is there no seaweed or barnacles on the statue miyuko turned swiftly towards him oh i've seen such things before they were covered with some special locker that does not permit living things to attach themselves to it <clears throat> then we uh, jump uh, to another part of the book when they made tests of the material from which it was made to calculate the weight to be lifted they got the most unexpected results under the superficial layer of some alloy the statue was pure gold if the horse <clears throat> was cast solid then its weight after allowance had been made for water displacement would be 400 tons special vessels with powerful salvage gear had been sent for <clears throat> an unexpected development from a pleasant afternoon somebody asked how so much valuable metal could have been used so foolishly one of the older historians recalled a legend discovered in the historical archives telling of the disappearance of the gold reserves of a whole country and that at a time when gold was the monetary expression of labor values certain criminal rulers guilty of tyranny and impoverishment of the people had been forced to flee to another country in those days there were obstacles called frontiers preventing contact between nations and before absconding they gathered together the entire gold reserve and cast a statue from it and placed it in the busiest square of the country's chief city nobody was able to find the gold the historian presumed that in those days nobody had been able to find the precious metal under the layer of the cheap alloy so that was the ephraim of stake on it another writer sergey alexeyev wrote in the novel treasures of the valkyrie that both but can but two horses were found back in the 1960s of the 20th century by a special kgb group but whether the literal fiction is supported by some real facts it's not possible to find out at the end of the 1990s it was reported that one of the batu horses was discovered during excavations near the village of ar 
the expedition of the Kosmopoisk Scientific Research Association visited there. The researchers interviewed local population, but they did not receive any information from the find. I have discussed this organization, Kosmopoisk, in my lecture books and videos, and I had the honor to know its leader, scientist and explorer, writer and researcher, Vadim Chernobrov, who passed away at a young age. He was a straightforward, honest researcher. If anything would have been found, the world would know. According to another myth, but two soldiers hid a whole wagon train with little valuables somewhere in the area of Lake Seliger in the Tver, Tver region of Russia. Um, well, the, uh, apparently the search for the um, for those uh, looted valuables began back in the time of Her Imperial Highness Catherine II. Then people arrived from St. Petersburg with old papers indicating the location of the treasure. In particular, they said that if you dig from the east, the diggers will come across a cast iron door behind which there is such wealth that there will be enough for the entire Tver province for a hundred years. According to legend, the uh, excavations were conducted in the area of the village of Zhirebtsovo. Finally, they came across a huge cleaver and a corner of some stone structure, but they did not have time to get to it. At night, a black mustache warrior in armor appeared uh, to, the, to the head of the excavations with the same cleaver in his hand and threatened that if everyone did not get out of here in the morning they would find their death there. Others have also seen the warrior. So they didn't try their luck. The expedition returned to the capital. In 2001 investigators from the Moscow club Raritiet tried to find a wagon train with Batu's treasures at the bottom of Lake Serebrini. A certain psychic woman told them that there are valuables there. So they took samples of water from the lake. It turned out that they really have an increased silver content. Also, there were no fish in the pond, and there was an incomprehensible hillock sticking out in the very middle of it. But it was not possible to get permission to conduct serious research operations on the Lake Serebrini, since the lake is located on the territory of the state uh, preserve. Um, private individuals also tried to look for treasures at the bottom of the lake. They say that there were, there were cases of divers um, and the cause was convulsions due to a sharp temperature drop. At the depth of the lake Serebrini there are areas with icy waters. But the local population is sure that the seekers fell victim to the curse because the treasure of Batu Khan is guarded by natural, by supernatural forces. In my previous videos I described the hunt for the treasures of the Mongol Empire. I am sure there are people and organizations out there that continue the hunt and of course they know much more than I do but I am not sure I'm absolutely not sure if they know more than Ivan Efremov did. Thank you and I appreciate your support. If you can support me, there are links uh, to the description of this video.